In Daniel 4, Nebuchadnezzar has a dream, and the time prophecy says, let, a, let his heart be changed from a man's, let a beast's heart be given to him, and let seven times pass over him. And then the seven times prophecy is repeated a total of four times. So again, we see like in the seven times prophecy of Leviticus, where it's repeated four times, as if you weren't, you know, as if Israel wasn't listening, listening the first three times about the punishment of Israel that would come upon them. The same is repeated in Daniel 4 in Nebuchadnezzar's dream about the seven times. Seven times is repeated four times. Now, the significance of four, as I alluded to, or as has been alluded to uh, in the discussion about Genesis 2, which has the, is the prophecy of the four rivers. From the beginning of the Bible, we begin to see the significance of four. And in verse 10, it even refers to it as four heads. And each time, uh, the seven times in Leviticus and Daniel, it's repeated four times. And in other chapters of Daniel, it's explained. In Daniel 2, again, Nebuchadnezzar has a dream, and he wants everybody to, all the wise men to not only interpret the dream, but tell the king what the dream was without the king telling the wise men. Uh, and none of the wise men said, they all said, well, we can't do that. And so the king ordered all the wise men, including Daniel, to be put to death. And when Daniel found out about it, he came to the king, prayed to God, and was revealed the dream that the king had, and then interpreted it for him. And this one is interesting because it's an image that the king has of a, of a soldier. And the soldier has four different parts, a head, a torso, a, stump, a belly, and uh, legs and feet are included together. And now what's interesting is, if I may digress a little, in verse 21 of Daniel 2, beginning with verse 20, Daniel answered and said, Blessed be the name of God forever and ever, for wisdom and might are his. And he changeth the times and the seasons. He removeth kings, and setteth up kings, and giveth wisdom unto the wise, and knowledge unto them that know understanding. And he changes the times and the seasons. Now, the times are the quantity of time uh, in these time prophecies. And here it says it's an allusion to how there will be a change of times, meaning the solar year calculation and the lunar year calculation. And it is also a reference to the seasons. Now, seasons is a period of time. Objectively, it's uh, 90 days or one fourth of a year. That's an interesting prophecy time length that we can go into at a different time. Now, also in Daniel 2, Daniel uh, explains to, again, this is the, the vision of the soldier with the four sections. And Daniel says in verse 31, Thou, O king, sawest, and behold, a great image. This great image, whose brightness was excellent, stood before thee, and the form thereof was terrible. The image of the head was of fine gold, his breast and his arms of silver, his belly and his thighs of brass, his legs of iron, his feet part of iron and part of clay. Uh, and there's an invisible hand that uh, saws a stone out of the mountain and then breaks um, the image into pieces. And Daniel goes on to explain what these four sections of the vision are of the soldier. He says, This is a dream, and we will tell the interpretation thereof before the king. Thou, O king, art the king of kings. For the God of heaven hath given thee a kingdom, power, and strength, and glory. And wheresoever the children of men dwell, the beasts of the field, and the fowls of the heaven, hath he given unto thine hand, and hath made thee ruler over them all. Thou art this head of gold. So if I might interject, Nebuchadnezzar is the king of the first kingdom. And verse 39 goes on, And after thee shall arise another kingdom inferior to thee, and another third kingdom of brass, which shall bear rule over all the earth, and the fourth kingdom shall be as strong as iron, for as much as iron breaketh in pieces and subdueth all things, and as iron that breaketh all these, shall it break in pieces and bruise. So this fourth kingdom is a bad kingdom. Uh, there's nothing good about it. So if I were a kingdom on earth, I wouldn't want to be this fourth kingdom if I were that kingdom. But there are some people that uh, there's not enough uh, volunteers willing to rush to the aid of this fourth kingdom. 
because it's, it's very big. So the first kingdom is Nebuchadnezzar, uh, which is the kingdom of Israel, uh, if we piece these out on a chart. Uh, the second kingdom, now he says the, the, the first kingdom is good, it's gold, and the, the second kingdoms and the ones that follow are inferior. So they're not God's chosen people. So that again is the kingdom of Zoroaster and Christianity. And the fourth one is Islam. Now what's interesting about this Daniel 2, chapter 2 prophecy is that um, it's very descriptive about the course of Islam that Islam took over the years. Uh, as it says, the fourth kingdom shall be strong as iron. In verse 41 it says, and Whereas thou sawest the feet and toes, part of potter's clay and part of iron, the kingdom shall be divided, but there shall be in it of the strength of the iron, for as much as thou sawest the iron mixed with mire clay. Now, if we look at the course that Islam took, from the moment Muhammad was on his deathbed and passed into the next world, from that point on there was division within Islam. There's what turned out to be the Sunnis and the Shiites. Now, if you ask Sunnis and Shiites how they began, they will don't really give you a clear answer. But what has evolved over time is that the Sunnis are the ones who rejected the imamate, uh, the, the successors of Muhammad as being Ali and his uh, progeny, and the, uh, the Sunnis elected their own, what they called caliphs, and the caliphate refers to... Uh, the, the Sunni kingdom. But uh, Islam has been divided, and it says it's, you know, it's divided with uh, the fixed feet mixed with iron and clay. It's divided in two, and there are two main sects of Islam. Uh, verse 42 goes on to say, And as the toes of the feet were part of iron and part of clay, so the kingdom shall be partly strong and partly broken. Uh, and Islam is, uh, it is strong, and, uh, and it's broken, because uh, the broken means a number of things. Uh, that it doesn't work, that um, it's broken in pieces, needs to be fixed. And verse 43 says, And whereas thou sawest iron mixed with mire clay, they shall mingle themselves with the seed of men, but they shall not cleave one to another, even as iron is not mixed with clay. Now it goes on to say, And in the days of these kings shall the God of heaven set up a kingdom. Let me go back. Uh, the days of these kings, meaning the, the fourth kingdom, the kingdom of Islam that God himself will come and set up a kingdom, and Baha'u'llah shall come. And that's when Baha'u'llah came, was uh, among the Islamic kingdom, uh, which was the fourth kingdom. Let's repeat, 44. And in the days of these kings shall the God of heaven set up a kingdom, which shall never be destroyed. And the kingdom shall not be left to other people, but it shall break in pieces and consume all these kingdoms, and it shall stand forever. Now this is interesting. The kingdom shall not be left to other people, meaning the priests. That every religion in the past was uh, this priestly hierarchy set itself up after the passing of the prophet, and they're not guided people. They are other people. And Baha'u'llah has come, ordained his own government, and left the ruling of the kingdom, not to people, but to institutions, to divine institutions that Baha'u'llah himself ordained. People serve on these institutions, but they are not the governors. It is not their doing when they do it properly. Now, it does say it shall break in pieces and consume all these kingdoms, meaning the the four Abrahamic religions, but it does say, it says consume. Now, of course, the fourth beast, the fourth kingdom, uh, breaks everything in pieces, and this prophecy says that The God of heaven shall set up a kingdom, and it shall break in pieces and consume all these kingdoms, and it shall stand forever. What this means is that eventually everyone will come into the fold of Baha'u'llah and accept his religion. Uh, It won't be done through violence, but everything will fall apart, definitely, because nothing can withstand God's will, and that's the good news. Okay, so that's Daniel chapter 2. And that's dealing a a little bit more with the significance of four. Now, in Daniel chapter 7, we begin to see along our chart, this is where we get to the three and a half times, time, times, and then half, time, times, and the dividing of a time, and also references to the 42 months and the 1260 days in Revelation. 
Abdul Baha has explained in the book of Revelation, chapter 11, about the 1260 days and the two witnesses and the 42 months and how these all relate to. Uh, and he's also explained the beast with the seven heads and the ten horns that Jesus spoke of in, in the book of Revelation. So I don't need to add anything to that. But I will say that Daniel, uh, in chapter 7, speaks of a beast, uh, of, again, of the four beasts, he, that he has, a, he has a dream. And in verse 3, he says, uh, in verse 2, he says, Daniel spake and said, I saw in my vision by night, and behold, the four winds of heaven strove upon the great sea. Now, the four winds of heaven is, is of course, the, the revelation of God coming through his messengers. Strove upon a great sea, which is the sea of uh, the ocean of his words. And Daniel says in verse 3, And four great beasts came up from the sea, diverse from one another. So God sends a messenger, and we reply, and, and humanity replies, as a beast. Uh, meaning, not completely transformed. Still clinging to our animalistic uh, and selfish desires. Um, and yet still being guided and because they're kingdoms. Now, it describes these beasts. The first was like a lion and had an eagle's wings. I beheld till the wings thereof were plucked, and it was lifted up from the earth and made to stand upon the feet as a man. The man's heart was given to it. Now, the first kingdom has always been described as gold and good and bedellion and all sorts of good things. Uh, and I've repeatedly said this is Israel. And this is a bit more descriptive. Uh, first was like a lion, Israel. Is, in its day, was like a lion and had eagle's wings which soar over its enemies. And in the prophecies of the return of Israel in Isaiah and Micah, they refer to um, the remnant of Jacob being among the Gentiles, like a lion among the beasts of the forest, like a young lion who, as he goes out, teareth down and treadeth underfoot, and none can deliver. So this is again a reference to Israel, the lion and the eagle. Again, a, more descriptive of what will happen to Israel. Daniel says, I beheld till the wings thereof were plucked, and do as lifted up from the earth, and made to stand upon the feet as a man. And a man's heart was given to it. And this is exactly what happened to Israel. It went from a great kingdom to uh, losing everything, losing their wings, and having to walk as men, uh, and wait 2,520 years before they can again serve God as Israel. Now, the second beast and the third beast, it's a toss-up. The second beast, and I beheld another beast. And behold, and Daniel says in verse 5, And behold another beast, a second, like to a bear. And it raised up itself on one side, and it had three ribs in the mouth of it, between the teeth of it. And they said thus unto it, Arise, devour much flesh. Now, if we take it chronologically, this would refer to the Zoroastrian kingdom. And the Persian Empire was very powerful in its day. And in verse 6, it goes on to say, After this I beheld, and lo, another like a leopard, which had upon the back of it four wings of a fowl. The beast also had four heads, and dominion was given to it. Now, this uh, Christianity has endured for a long time. Uh, it has had dominion given to it. We can discuss the beast with the four heads, the four wings again, at some other time. But then in verse 7, Daniel goes on and gets very descriptive about this fourth beast. He says, After this I saw in the night visions, and behold a fourth beast, dreadful and terrible and strong exceedingly. And it had great iron teeth, and it devoured and brake in pieces, and stamped the residue with the feet of it. And it was diverse from all the beasts that were before it. And it had ten horns. Now, we know from Abdu'l-Bahá that this beast with the seven heads and the ten horns that Jesus described in, in Revelation, chapter 11, is the uh, breakup of Islam, the corruption of Islam, the overthrow of Islam by the Umayyad dynasty. Daniel refers to it as the beast with ten horns. He's not as descriptive as Jesus is. So people had to wait a long time before they found out that it was going to have seven heads and ten horns. Now, this is interesting. It goes on to describe the horns coming up and going down. I considered the horns, and behold, there came up among them another little horn, before whom there were three of the first horns plucked up by the roots. And behold, in this horn were the eyes like the eyes of a man, and a mouth speaking great things. There was a horn after Moabia, his offspring. Verse 9 goes on to say, I beheld till the thrones were cast down, and the Ancient of Days did sit, whose garment was white as snow. 
and the hair of his head was like the pure wool. His throne was like the fiery flame, and his wheels as burning fire. A fiery stream issued and came forth from before him. Thousand thousands ministered unto him, and ten thousand times ten thousand stood before him. The judgment was set, and the books were opened. So this is obviously a prophecy about the end times, when God himself will come in this prophecy is called the Ancient of Days. And all throughout the Baha'i writings, many times, over and over, repeatedly, Baha'u'llah refers to himself as the Ancient of Days, that he is the fulfillment of this prophecy. Now, interestingly enough, the Ancient of Days is mentioned only once by Daniel in this chapter. Well, it's mentioned a couple times in this chapter, but um, this is the only chapter that it's mentioned in. Verse 11 begins, I beheld then because of the voice of the great words which the horn spoke. I beheld even till the beast was slain and his body destroyed and given to the burning flame. So this is a prophecy that no matter what this fourth kingdom does, no matter what Islam does, they will not survive the will of God. The will of God will, and that everything, this is just not a good prophecy. The beast will be slain. The body will, the body is the, you know, the followers, the following. Uh, and given to the burning flame. So it's not going to be a fiery destruction, but what will happen is that uh, anyone who ascribes to the old ways will be like rotten wood and fit only for the fire. Now, here's an interesting prophecy in verse 12. It says, As concerning the rest of the beast, they had their dominion taken away, yet their lives were prolonged for a season and time. So if we calculate out a season as 90 years and a time as 360 years, then we have... 450 years, that as the duration until all of the followers of previous religions will, uh, it'll take before they accept Baha'u'llah. See, now that wasn't very violent. That was, uh, you know, we're, we're, we're willing to wait. God is willing to wait. In verse 13, Daniel says, I saw in the night visions, and behold, one like the Son of Man came with the clouds of heaven and came to the Ancient of Days, and they brought him near before him. Now, this one like the Son of Man, Jesus, of course, is the Son of Man. He's referred to as the Son of Man, and he talks about the time when the Son of Man cometh. So this is like, because this is Daniel in the Old Testament, it's a reference to one like the Son of Man. I mean, the Son of Man will come first, and then he'll return. So Jesus had two stations, that of Christ, the Messiah, and that of the Son of God. So one like the Son of Man came with the clouds of heaven, and came to the Ancient of Days, came to Baha'u'llah, and they brought him near before him. So this could be the Bab, it could also be Abdu'l-Baha, because it says, And there was given him dominion and glory and a kingdom, that all people, nations, and languages should serve him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion which shall not pass away, and his kingdom that which shall not be destroyed. Now this could just as easily refer to the Bab as it does to Abdu'l-Baha, because Abdu'l-Baha, though not a prophet, Fulfilled Baha'u'llah's covenant, he was the center of his covenant, completed Baha'u'llah's government, ordained things that Baha'u'llah had left unclear. So Abdul Baha is the extension of Baha'u'llah. I assure you in the future, there will never be one like Abdul Baha again. And then Daniel uh, gets to explain uh, what, the, what the dream means about the beasts. I, Daniel, was grieved in my spirit, in the midst of my body, and the visions of my head troubled me. I came near unto one of them that stood by and asked him the truth of all this. So he told me and made me know the interpretation of the things. These great beasts, which are four, are four kings which shall arise out of the earth. But the saints of the Most High shall take the kingdom and possess the kingdom forever, even forever and ever. So kings, of course, are not just kings, they're kingdoms that endure over time. In verse 19, this saint says to Daniel, and Daniel says, in verse 19, Then I would know the truth of the fourth beast, which was diverse from all the others, exceeding dreadful, whose teeth were of iron, and his nails of brass, which devoured breaking pieces and stamped the residue with his feet. And here again, it's repeating this imagery, a very violent, brutal kingdom. And no matter how violent it is and how destructive it is, after it destroys, it still stamps the residue with its feet. This is like the... If you want uh, modern imagery, uh, if you ever watch Doctor Who, the Cybermen would stamp their feet around. It, it conjures up that sort of image. In verse 20, it says, um, 
and of the ten horns that were in his head, and of the other which came up, and before whom three fell. So here, one king and three will fall. Now, we don't know what fall means. Now, a lot of Christian scholars uh, or religious scholars have tried to interpret this, uh, you know, the beast with the 666 on his forehead, and, and one king is going to kill three kings. It doesn't say it's going to kill three kings. It says before whom three fell, which we don't know what fell means. It could mean that he killed them or that they were killed. Uh, it goes on to say, even of that horn that had eyes and a mouth that spake very great things, whose look was more stout than his fellows. Now, Moavia had a son who was uh, just as evil as Moavia. Verse 21, it says, I beheld, and the same horn made war with the saints and prevailed against them. So this is not good, uh, but this is what happened. Um, the saints, in this sense, are the imams. They were uh, overthrown, uh, deprived from power. Uh, and not accepted by the rank and file of the Islamic followers. But it says, uh, made war and prevailed against them. In verse 22, it continues, until the Ancient of Days came, and judgment was given to the saints of the Most High. Now, this is different from the saints, the saints of the Most High. And it continues, and the time came that the saints possessed the kingdom. So, this is interesting. You know, we always like to think of ourselves as saints, which is pretty much a mistake. Uh, the saints, there was a time after uh, Baha'u'llah appointed Abdu'l-Baha, Abdu'l-Baha appointed Shoghi Effendi as the guardian and uh, sort of pretty much ordained the whole station of the guardianship that, uh, and that Baha'u'llah had alluded to. Uh, Abdu'l-Baha completed it. There was a time after the guardian went to the next world, uh, before the House of Justice was brought into being and elected, uh, that the hands of the cause were the chief stewards of the faith and guided the faith during a time of transition in the six years between the passing of uh, Shoghi Effendi and the election of the first House of Justice. So there was a time that the saints, we could say that the, we can say it, I don't know if there's any authority to say it, but it sure looks interesting. Or it could be referring to the House of Justice. Thus he said in, chap in verse 23, the fourth beast shall be the fourth kingdom upon earth which shall be diverse from all kingdoms, and shall devour the whole earth, and shall tread it down and break it in pieces. Then again, it's repeating just how destructive Islam will become. Verse 25 says, And he shall speak great words against the Most High, and shall wear out the saints of the Most High, and think to change times and laws. And they shall be given unto his hand until a time, times, and the dividing of a time. So here's the mention of the three and a half times, the 1,260 year, prophecy of Islam. And there's another reference to the ten horns. And the ten horns out of this kingdom are the ten kings that shall arise, and another shall rise after them, and he shall be diverse from the first, and he shall subdue three kings. So here again is the repetition of this one and three, subduing three kings. I hear they'll be subdued. It doesn't say killed again, it says subdued. And it goes on, it's repeated the third time. We'll get to that in a minute. But here again, it says that, uh, that the, the king, the beast, will speak against great words against the Most High, shall wear out the saints of the Most High, and think to change times and laws. So in Daniel 2 is where it says um, that God changes times and seasons. But here in, in Daniel 7, in reference to the beast, it says that he will think to change times and laws. So interesting, God changes the times and the beast thinks he changes the times. But again, this is a reference to the change from the solar years to lunar years. And the seven times, the first seven times prophecy is a solar prophecy. And the three and a half times are lunar years.